Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I am your host, Katie, and with me is Carrie. Hi. Today, we are going to be talking about YA releases that came out October 23rd. 2023 oh goodness just in time for the spooky season we are very excited this is one of my favorite episodes to do because it can be fun and ridiculous but also there's some really good ones coming out this uh month carrie why don't you start us off with your first read my first pick today and we have not read any of these books yet it's all these sunken souls a black horror anthology the publisher is amberjack publishing Welcome to the dark. We're all familiar with tropes of the horror genre. Slasher and victims, demon and possessed, bloody screams, haunted visions, and the peddler of wares we aren't sure we can trust. This is a young adult horror anthology intended for fans of Jordan Peele and Lovecraft Country. Contributors are Kaylin Bayron, Lizelle Samberry, Joel Rochester, Joelle Wellington, Ryan Douglas, Cersei Moskowitz, and more. I love books of short stories. I'm very tempted. It's All These Sunken Souls, a black horror anthology. My first book of today, and I forgot I should have gone first, but that's okay. I can go twice, I suppose. Oh, do it. Yes. So my first book is by Erica Waters. It's All That Consumes Us that comes out October 17th. We have a, it looks like a dark academia book. The students in Corbin College's elite ac- a- academic society, Magni Viri, have it all. They get free tuition. Bastards. Inspirational <laughs> professors. Bastards again. And dream jobs once they graduate. This is the perfect place. <laughs> When first-gen college student Tara is offered a chance to enroll, she doesn't hesitate. Good girl. Except once she settled into the gorgeous Victorian dormitory, something strange starts to happen. She's finally writing, but her stories are dark and twisted. Her dreams oh. feel as if they could bury her alive. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah. An unseen presence seems to stalk her through the halls, and a chilling secret awaits Tara at the heart of Magni Viri, one that just might turn her nightmares into reality, one that might destroy her before she has a chance to escape. This is called All That Consumes Us. This is by Erica Waters, and my other book has an amazing cover on it. It is called Bad Medicine, and this is by Christopher Twin. Uh, Stephen Graham Jones is all for this book. It's about a group of Cree teens gather around a fire to share stories of spirits and shapeshifters. This is actually a debut graphic novel. My bad, but that's okay. We'll go through it really fast. That's okay. So five teens decide to build a fire, exchange horror stories. Chad begins by telling the group about an unfortunate fisher who encountered a cluster of small malevolent creatures while navigating the river in his canoe. Attempting to defend himself, Carl lashed out with an oar and his world changed forever. One by one, the teens try to outdo each other and the evening evolves into an impromptu storytelling competition. On certain nights, if you walk along Loon River and peer under the bridge, you might spot a fire. You might hear a laugh. You might hear a scream. If you edge closer and the conditions are just right, your view of the river will melt away into a inky black beyond the firelight. Not to worry, the echoes of rushing water will help you find your way back or... Maybe not. <laughs> so this is actually inspired by a true Cree folk tale. And it's kind of a contemporary version of that. This is Bad Medicine by Christopher Twin. My next book is Before the Devil Knows You're Here by Autumn Krauss. The publisher is Peachtree Teen, grade level 9 to 12. It's part dark gothic fantasy, part journey into the bazaar. It's a blending of tall tales and Latin American surrealism. It's set in 1836, Wisconsin. Catalina lives with her pa and brother in a ramshackle cabin on the edge of the wilderness. Harsh winters have brought the family to the brink of starvation, just like the Ingalls family. And Catalina has replaced her poet's soul with an unyielding determination to keep pa and her brother alive. 
When a sudden illness claims paw, a strange man appears. The man is covered in bark. Leaves are growing from his head and sap is dripping from his eyes. (laughs) Oh, he scoops up her brother and disappears, leaving behind a bird with crimson wings. Catalina can't let this man, if that's what he is, have her brother, so she grabs Pa's knife and follows the bird. Along the way, she finds help from a young lumberjack who has his own reasons for hunting the man of sap. Their journey takes them deeper into the woods, and they encounter strange beasts and tormented spirits. This sounds really good, like it's action-packed. It's before the devil knows you're here, and it's a very unusual premise, because a lot of the YA books lately have been a little <clears throat> the same. <laughs> yes, I agree. It's by Autumn Krauss, Before the Devil Knows You're Here. My next book is Beholder. This is by Ryan La Sala. This comes out, or came out, October 3rd. He They did the Honeys book, which is, I mean, it's a pretty big hit. So this is his latest. This is a contemporary fable about art, aesthetic obsession, and the gaze that peers back at us from behind our reflections. Ooh. So nobody survived the party at the penthouse except for Athen. Uh, Athen is short for a very long name that I cannot pronounce. I apologize. <laughs> They've made it far in life, relying on charm and good looks, even securing an invitation to a mysterious penthouse soiree for New York City's artsy elite. But when he sneaks off to the bathroom, he hears a slam, followed by a scream, and then Athen peers outside, only to be pushed back in by, pushed back in by a boy his age. The boy gravely tells him not to open the door, which <laughs> then Athen gets closed into. Outside of the door, the party descends into chaos. Through hours of howls, laughter, and sobs, Athen stays hidden. Dude, I would not stay hidden through that. That's insane. So when he finally emerges, he discovers a massacre where corpses appear to have arranged themselves into a disturbingly elegant sculpture. That's weird. Right? Athens' mysterious savior is nowhere to be found. Athen is the only known survivor and is now, of course, the primary suspect. So he has to prove his innocence. Uh, Athen is swept up in a supernatural mystery, one of secret occult societies and deadly eldritch horrors with rather distinctive taste. Something evil is waking up in the walls of New York City and is compelling victims towards violence, chaos, and self-destruction. This is wild, because this is a YA book, but it seems really brutal for a YA book. So this is called Beholder by Ryan La Sala. My next book is Bittersweet in the Hollow. It's by Kate Pearsall. It is grades 7 to 9. It's a beautifully dark and enthralling YA book where four sisters with unusual talents investigate a mysterious disappearance in their secluded Appalachian town. It's called Cabal Hollow, (laughs) surrounded by the vast national forest. The James women serve up more than fried green tomatoes at the Harvest Moon Dinner, where the family recipes are not the only secrets. Like her (laughs) sisters, Lyndon was born with an unusual ability. She can taste what others are feeling. But this so-called gift soured her relationship with the vexingly attractive Cole Spencer one fateful night a year ago. Enough with these hot dudes that are annoying. (laughs) (laughs) It was a night when Lyndon vanished into the depths of the forest and returned with no memories of what happened. Just a litany of questions and a haze of nightmares that suggest there's more to her story than simply getting lost. Now, during the hottest summer on record, we know how that goes, another girl in town is gone, and the similarities to last year's events are striking. Except this time, the missing girl doesn't make it home, and when her body's discovered, the scene unmistakably spells murder. Lyndon enlists the help of her sisters to find what's hiding in the forest before it finds her. She starts digging for truth about the moth-winged man, rumored to haunt the hollow, and about her bitter rift with Cole, and even about her family. She must question if some secrets are best left buried. This sounds so good. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect autumn read 
Because it's set in the creepy woods. Yes. It's Bittersweet in the Hollow by Kate Pearsall. This next book has a stunning cover. So make sure to go check out our show notes, which are on darksideofthelibrary.com. They are affiliate links, but this cover, so pretty. Oh, yeah. This is called Curious Tides. This is a duology called The Drowned Gods, and this is the first installment. This came out October 3rd. This is by Pascal Lequel or Lexel. So we have our main character, Emery, who does go to this prestigious school called Eldritch or Aldrin College for Lunar Magics, but she, comparatively to her peers, is pretty mediocre. But something really horrible happens at this place called Dovermere Sea Caves, which leaves all of her ca- classmates dead, and she's the only survivor. Oh, I'm I'm getting survivor books today, apparently. <laughs> so she is plagued now by a strange and impossible power that no healer should possess. So these powers are potentially can ruin her life especially if the wrong person were to discover them. She needs to figure out how to gain control of her abilities, so she enlists the help of one of the most reclusive students, whose name is Boz. He's well-versed in deadly nature and dark magic, and his sister, unfortunately, was one of the students that ended up being drowned, and, you know, it was also Emery's best friend, who passed away at the sea caves. So, it says, determined to find the truth behind the drownings and the cult-like secret society she's convinced her classmates were involved in, Emery is faced with even more questions when the supposedly drowned students start washing ashore. Oh, jeez. They're alive, only for them each immediately to die horrible, magical deaths. What was what? the point, then, of keeping them alive in the ocean? I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, my God. That Yeah, that is a lot. Emery is not the only one seeking answers. When her new magic captures the society's attention, she, of course, finds herself drawn into their world of privilege and power, all while wondering if the truth she's searching for might lead her right back to Dovermere to face the fate she was never meant to escape. Ooh. So this is called The Curious Tides. This is by Pascal LaSalle. I'm totally creeped out, and that means I have to check it out. Yeah. My next book is Curses and Other Buried Things. It comes out October 10. The author is Caroline George. Seven generations of women in Susanna Prather's family have been lost to the Georgia swamp behind her house. The morning after her 18th birthday, she awakens soaked with water with no memory of sleepwalking. Oh, I would hate that. Mm -hmm. No matter how she tries to stop it, she's pulled from her safe bed night after night haunted by her own family history and legacy. Now the truth feels unavoidable. It's only a matter of time before she loses her mind and the swamp becomes her grave, unless she can figure out how to break the curse. When she isn't sleepwalking, she's dreaming about her great, 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 great grandmother, (laughs) Susanna Yawn, who set the curse in motion in 1855. Her ancestor's life bears such similarity to her own that it might hold the key she seeks, or it might only foretell tragedy. As Susanna seeks solutions in the past and present, family members hold secrets tighter to their chests, friends grow distant, we have all been there, and old flames threaten to sputter and die. But Susanna has something no one else has been able to seize, the unflagging belief that all curses can be broken and love can help a new future begin. That's Curses and Other Buried Things by Caroline George. Next up is one that I'm really curious about. I really appreciate it because this is a LGBTQ plus, apparently it's supposed to be a romance, but it's a YA horror slash fantasy dark academia. But our main character is finally a dude. It is not sapphic romance. I have no qualms with sapphic romances, but we never get to see any other, it feels like any other queer romances at all. So You're right. Good. I'm excited yeah. about this. This is The Forest Demands It's Due, plus it sounds creepy. This is by Kosoko Jackson. So this is, okay, so Regent Academy has had a long and storied history in Winslow, Vermont as does the forest that surrounds it. The school is known for molding teens into leaders, but its history is far more nefarious. We have 17-year-old Douglas Jones, 
wants nothing to do with the region's king making. He's just trying to survive. <laughs> just trying to live here. <laughs> But then a student is murdered, and for some reason, by the next day, nobody remembers him having existed except for Douglas and the groundskeeper's son, Everett Everly. I kind of hate that name, but I'll overlook it. <laughs> In his determination to uncover the truth, Douglas awakens a horror hidden within the forest, unearthing secrets that may have been buried for centuries. A vengeful creature wants blood as payment for a debt more than 300 years in the making, or oh. it will swallow all of Winslow in darkness. And for the first time in his life, Douglas might have a chance to grasp the one thing he's always felt was missing, power. But if he's not careful, he will find out that power has a tendency to corrupt absolutely everything. So this is apparently a high-octane mystery of murder and magic. So this is The Forest Demands Its Due. This is by Kosoko Jackson. My next book has a great two-word title. Ready for it? Hatchet yes. Girls. Ooh, I like that. It's by Diana Rodriguez Wallach. Wallach, excuse me. And it's coming out October 10. It's set more than 100 years after the Borden murders. It's a supernatural thriller that imagines what might happen if history were to repeat itself today. So when Mariella Morse accuses her boyfriend, Vic, of murdering her wealthy parents with an axe, the town is quick to believe her. Well, yeah. Statistics, I, I, yeah. It doesn't help that Vic is caught standing over her parents' bodies with blood on his hands, unable to remember anything about the night in question. Ooh, but Vic's sister, Tessa, knows that Vic would never be capable of such a gruesome crime. Haunted by the mistake she made that led her family to move to Fall River, Massachusetts in the first place, she sets out to prove her brother's innocence. Tessa's search for answers will lead her into a sprawling, notoriously cursed forest, another evil forest book, Yay! where she and Mariella must face a darkness that has lurked within their town since before the days of Lizzie Borden the original axe murderess of Fall River. This sounds so good. Yes. I'm going to pick up a copy of Hatchet Girls. It's by Diana Rodriguez Wallach. Oh, I'm so excited to hear what you think about it. My next book is Here Lies Olive. It comes out October 20th, and it's by Kate Anderson. I don't know why that sounds familiar. Here Lies Olive. Anyway, growing up in the dark tourism capital of the United States. 16-year-old Olive should be comfortable with death, but ever since an allergic reaction almost sent her to the wrong side of the grass, she's been terrified that there is no afterlife. And after the death of her surrogate grandmother, Olive has kept everyone at arm's length because if there's nothing after we die, relationships and love can only end in sorrow. All. When she summons a spirit to answer her questions about death, Olive meets Jay, a hitchhiking ghost trapped in the woods behind the poor house where he died. Olive agrees to help Jay find his unmarked grave in exchange for answers about the other side and what comes next. Meanwhile, someone or something is targeting Olive's classmates, and the longer Jay lingers, the more serious the attacks become. Blaming herself for having brought Jay back, Olive teams up with maybe Nemesis, maybe Crush, of course, Marin, ex-best friend, Davis, and new girl, Vanessa, to free Jay's spirit before he's trapped as a malevolent shade, and the attacks turn deadly. But in doing so, Olive must face her fear of death and risk losing another person she loves to be the nothing. So this is called Here Lies Olive by Kate Anderson, and it has a cool cover. My next book is called The Night Fox. It's by Ashley Wilda or Wilda. It's a luminous haunting debut alternating between now and then reality and magic. And it tells the story of a girl confronting heartbreak while at a mysterious recovery program in the wilderness. Okay. Finally, something is not said in the woods. Hmm? When 17 year old Eli arrives at Wraith, a remote mountain retreat for teens with mental health issues, her mind is made up. She's not interested in participating, and she doesn't need to heal. Still reeling from a breakup that left both her heart and faith shattered, 
she's determined to fake being fine so the program's warden will clear her to return home. But the retreat itself has other ideas. The valley's magical surroundings transform each time she ventures out, playing with her mind and dredging up her grief-laden memories. Despite the warning signs, Eli explores more of the area than she'd ever planned, even venturing into the dangerous night realm. Sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. This is a new premise. I like it. It's The Night Fox by Ashley Wilda. Okay, so my next book is called Night of the Witch. It's going to be a part of a series of books called Witch and Hunter. This came out October 3rd. This is by Sarah Roche and Beth Revis. Originally, I thought this was a nonfiction book just by the cover, but it is cool. We have two characters here, Fritzy, who's a witch. She is a lone survivor of a brutal attack on her coven, and she, of course, is determined to find her only remaining family member. And she wants to bring, hopefully I don't butcher this, it's called Hexenjagers, which are zealot witch hunters, to justice for the lives that they ended. And she needs to take down their merciless evil leader, whose name is, oh goodness, Commandant Dieter Kirch. I hope I said that. It's all German. We also have Otto, who is a Hexenjager, but that's basically his cover. Years ago, the this group of people burned, down, burned his innocent mother alive, and he's been plotting vengeance ever since, and now the time has come to pay the price. Fritzi and Otto are thrown together, and of course, they can't really trust each other because of where they come from. Oh, yeah. They have this reluctant truce fueled by this common enemy, uh, which takes them from the city at the heart of the Hexenjager's power to the wild and mysterious, of course, Black Forest. <laughs> we got to go to the okay. forest. <laughs> uh, so as old truths come to light and new dangers are revealed, Fritzi and Otto uncover a horrifying magical plot at the center of the Hexenjager attacks that lead back to Commandant Kirch. But their own growing feelings for each other may be the most powerful magic of all. <laughs> oh, so many romances lately. <laughs> <laughs> so precious. This is called Night of the Witch. This is by Sarah Rush and Beth Revis. My next book has a stunning black and blue cover with a sword on it. It's called Night Weaver. It's by R.M. Gray. Comes out October 13 from Merlin's Pen Publishing. Violet Oberon had never stepped foot on land. 600 years after the night weavers claimed human lands for their own, the ocean is a haven for 17-year-old Violet and her family. Notorious pirates of the Western Sea, the Oberon clan are undefeated in battle until an underling murders Violet's brother and she discovers there are monsters more fearsome than the night weavers that have taken them captive. When the son of a wealthy night weaver shows Violet and her family mercy, offering employment at his estate rather than enslavement, Violet vows not to forget that he is everything she hates. But as she adjusts to her new role as a kitchen maid at Bloodgrave Manor, great name, she finds that hatred is a curious thing. He's arrogant, entitled, and right hand of the wicked prince, but William Castor might be the key to avenging her brother and reclaiming her freedom. But mercy always comes with a price. As Violet hunts the underling responsible for her brother's death, dark secrets threaten to unravel everything she thought she knew about the Night Weavers, herself, and her world. Bum, She's bum. torn between family loyalty and a chance at revenge, and the cost of learning the truth about her brother's murder could be her life. This sounds interesting. I'm going to give it a try. It's Night Weaver by R.M. Gray. Next up is The Scarlet Alchemist. This came out October 3rd. It's by Kylie Lee Baker. Our main protagonist is Xylan, who dreams of becoming the royal alchemist for a wealthy Chinese family. This is set in uh, Tang Dynasty, China. So what they do is they provide these gold and gems, these alchemists, they create them, and then the wealthy will eat these gems so that they can stay young forever. Give me some. <laughs> right. That would be amazing. But Xylan is actually trapped in a impoverished, impoverished village in southern China. 
And she kind of practices this, uh, you know, illegal form of alchemy, which is uh, resurrecting the dead for a price. <laughs> so Xylan finally has the chance to complete her imperial exams and she ventures to the capital to compete against the best of the best alchemists in the entire country on top of that she uh, has apparently that reputation for raising the dead has followed her to the capital and the crown prince is now seeking out her help suspecting a coming assassination attempt oh jeez the more Xylan succeeds in her alchemy, the more she gets caught in the dangerous political games of the royal family. There are monsters lurking within the palace walls, and it's only a matter of time before they and secrets of Xylan's past catch up with her. This is going, or sorry, this is The Scarlet Alchemist. This is by Kylie Lee Baker. My next book is called Thin Air. It has an airplane on the cover. Eight hours, 12 contestants, a flight none of them might survive. A flight to Paris full of teenagers seeking opportunity turns deadly in a locked door YA thriller. I love airplane books. <laughs> so 17-year-old boarding school student Emily Walters is selected for an opportunity of a lifetime. She'll compete abroad for a cash prize that will cover not only tuition to the college of her choice, but it will lift her mother and her out of poverty. But almost from the moment she and 11 other contestants board a private jet to Europe, Emily realizes somebody is willing to do anything to win. She has to keep an eye on her best friend's flirty boyfriend, and she has to hide her own dark secrets. She's not sure how she'll survive the contest, much less the flight, especially when people start dying. As loyalties shift and secrets are revealed, Emily has to figure out who to trust and who's trying to kill them all before she becomes the next victim. It sounds very exciting. It's Thin Air by Kelly M. Parker. I love that title. It's so <laughs> cute. My next book is Too Scared to Sleep. This came out October 10th, and this is by Andrew Duplessis. This is a anthology of a bunch of teen short horror stories, and there's videos that accompany them. So you can like point your camera or your phone at a QR code that's provided, and there will be um, apparently video. So some examples of the stories you will find, uh, there's a story about a garbage disposal that feeds on uh, flesh. <laughs> we have a beloved stuffed rabbit that cooks up your parents. Oh. Roses that require human blood to bloom. So lots oh, of blood nice. and gore. It's great. <laughs> so check this out, especially if you do have kids that maybe, you know, uh, my niece just revealed to me that she isn't a huge fan of like lengthy books. And this might be a great compromise. You can have like a big book, but have short stories in there. This is Too Scared to Sleep. This is by Andrew Duplessis. My next book is Unholy Terrors. It's by Lyndall Clipstone. It comes out October 17. Everlene Blackthorne has devoted her life to the Wardens. They're a sect of holy war warriors who guard against monsters known as the Vespertine. When a strange series of omens occurs, Everlene disobeys orders to investigate, and she uncovers a startling truth in the form of Ravel Severin, a rogue Vespertine who reveals that the monsters have secrets of their own. So as you can tell by the floofy names, this is a dark fantasy. Uh, Ravel promises the help that she needs for a price. Vespertine magic requires blood, and if Everlene wants Ravel to guide across the dangerous moorland, she will have to allow him to feed from her. Oh, God. <laughs> now, it's a sin for a warden to feed a Vespertine, let alone love one. And as oh. Everlene and Ravel travel farther across the moorland, she realizes the question isn't whether she'll survive the journey, but if she'll return unchanged or if she wants to. This is by Henry Holt and Company, a very distinguished publisher. So it must be really good or they wouldn't have done it. It's Unholy Terrors by Lyndall Clipstone. My next book is called The Voice Upstairs, and it came out October 3rd. This is by Lara E. Weymouth. In 1920s England, a working class girl who can see spirits work, works with a lord's son to solve mysterious deaths at a local manor home. So it's kind of a historical paranormal fantasy. This is uh, about Wilhelmina Price. 
She has a dubious reputation in the village of Thrush's Green. Ever since her mother's untimely death, she has been able to see a person's spirit leaving their body days or hours before they die. Whoa, before they die. Interesting. Will has never been able to prevent these deaths, so her unusual skills has made her an outsider to most, except her long or lifelong friend, Edison, the youngest son of Lord Summerfield. But when a maid at the Summerfield's estate dies in the same mysterious way as Will's own mother, Will takes on a housemaid's position to investigate whether these women might in fact have been murdered. There is nothing Ed Summerfield val values more than his friendship with Will, which is why he's desperate to disguise how hopelessly in love he with her he's become. Aww. Cutie. And his belief that he may be haunted by the ghost of his older brother, Peter. Oh, well, that would be another reason to hide a few things. Because if Will, with her supernatural powers, can't see the same evidence of hauntings that Ed does, he worries he may actually be losing his mind. Together, Will and Ed must dig deeper into the Summerfield's horde of secrets, though the truth won't give itself up without a fight that could prove deadly to both of them, as they face cunning adversaries among the living dead. Hoo -hoo. This is called The Voice Upstairs. This is by Laura E. Weymouth. My final book tonight is When Ghosts Call Us Home. It's by Katya de Becerra. It's described as haunting of Hill House means found footage horror. <laughs> when Sophia Galich was 12, she starred in her older sister Layla's amateur horror movie called Vermilion, which recorded raw footage of her very real reactions to scenes that her sister concocted in their old Californian house on the coast, Cashore House. In the years after the film's release, Sophia's relationship with her sister became more strained, while her memories of the now infamous house fueled her nightmares. Vermillion amassed an army of fanatical fans who speculated about the film's hidden messages, and it was rumored that Layla made a pact with the devil, her soul in exchange for fame and arcane knowledge. Sophia dismissed this as gossip until Layla disappeared. Now Sophia must study the trail of clues that Layla has left behind, returning to the very place where it all began. As she gets closer and closer to Cashore's house haunted heart, she must once again confront the ghosts of her childhood. But the house won't reveal its secrets without a fight. I'm totally excited about this one. It's called When Ghosts Call Us Home by Katya de Becerra. And my final book of today is called Wrath Becomes Her. This comes out October 10. This is by Aiden or Aden Polyduros. Vera was made for vengeance. The setting is Lithuania in 1943. A, fa a father drowns in an all consuming grief of a daughter killed by the Nazis. He can't bring Chaya back from the dead, but he can use Kishif, an ancient and profane magic, to create a golem in her image which is also a Nazi killer to avenge her death. I'm in. That sounds great. Yeah. When Vera awakens, she can feel her violent purpose thrumming within her, but she can also feel glimpses of a human life lived, of stolen kisses amidst, amidst a, the tragedy, and of a grisly death. And when she meets Akiva, she realize, recognizes the boy with soft lips that gave warm kisses. Oh! But these memories are not hers, and Vera doesn't know if she gets or deserves to have a life beyond what she's made for. Vera's strength feels limitless until she learns that there are others who would channel Kishif for means far less noble than avenging a daughter's death. As she confronts the very basest of humanity, Vera will need more than what her creator gave her not just a reason to fight, but a reason to live. This is kind of a combination of Frankenstein meets Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> it's a Jewish historical horror novel. This is very unique. I'm I'm kind of digging it. This is called Wrath Becomes Her by Adam Polyduros. This wraps up our dark YA books coming out October 2023. Be sure to stop by our podcast or download more episodes 
throughout the month. We have covered adult dark spooky fiction in two-part episodes and dark nonfiction and coming soon dark kids books. You can find us at Dark Side of the Library on Instagram and Facebook. DarkSideOfTheLibrary.com, of course, is our website. I bet you could figure that out. We also have our presence on YouTube and on Amazon Live, where we have a storefront, Amazon.com slash shop slash DarkSideOfTheLibrary. We'd love it if you would help your dark book-loving friends find out about our podcast and our social media pages. Please share the word. And if you could leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, it would help other people find us. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in the next episode, which usually drop on Wednesdays, Fridays, and occasionally on Morbid Mondays. And have a wonderful spooky season.